Hello and welcome back to the School of Surgery. My name is Benjamin Baker, I'm an academic junior doctor and I'm here today with Miss Jill Arrowsmith, a consultant plastic and reconstructive surgeon with a special interest in hand surgery here in Derby. This is a third of our four podcasts about suturing techniques and we've been privileged enough to have the opportunity to demonstrate them on cadaveric tissues. Today's podcast is going to cover some more basic suturing techniques, the running mattress suture and the subcuticular suture. So the learning outcomes for this session are to be able to perform a running mattress suture, to be able to perform a subcuticular suture and to be able to safely remove these sutures. Running mattress suture, advantages and disadvantages. Running sutures are useful for long wounds in which wound tension has been minimised and which approximation of the edges is good. Theoretically, there's less scarring than with interrupted sutures as there are fewer knots, although there are the same number of needle insertions. The placement of running sutures is quicker. However, there is a risk of wound dehiscence if the suture ruptures and the inability to remove a single part of the suture line should the patient develop an underlying collection. It's also more difficult to make fine adjustments to the approximation of the wound edges than with interrupted sutures. Running mattress sutures with over and overs. Form an interrupted suture at one end of the wound but only cut to one end of the suture material. Pass the suture material parallel to the suture in the style of a horizontal mattress suture along the entire length of the wound without cutting the suture material. Every third horizontal mattress suture, place an interrupted suture over the top of the wound. Removal of the running horizontal mattress. Cut both ends of the suture line at the knots and the interrupted sutures placed over the wound. Remove the suture material piecemeal from the wound. Subcuticular suture, advantages and disadvantages. The running subcuticular suture is valuable in areas in which the tension has been eliminated and the best possible cosmetic result is desired. The epidermis is penetrated only at the beginning and end of the suture line and so the subcuticular suture effectively eliminates the risk of cross-hatching. It does not provide significant wound strength, although it does precisely approximate the wound edges. It's therefore best reserved for wounds in which the tension has been eliminated and there is minimal dead space. Subcuticular suture. Insert the suture one centimetre from the edge of the wound in the line of the wound. Retract the skin edge and take a small bite of the subcuticular tissue and then take a similar bite on the opposite side of the wound. The needle should be inserted opposite to the point of exit of the suture material from the opposite skin edge. This accurate placement will allow equal tension along the wound. At the end of the wound, the needle can be brought out through the skin and the suture can be cut. The suture material should be left fairly long to allow the edges to be pulled in order to approximate the wound edges and then taped to the skin. Removal of the subcuticular suture. Removing the subcuticular suture is straightforward. Simply remove the dressings and tape and pull one end to bring the suture material out of the wound. So to summarise, today we've learnt how to perform a running mattress suture, perform a subcuticular suture and how to safely remove these sutures. So join us again here soon on the School of Surgery for some more podcasts. You can also find us on Facebook but remember to pick the right school of surgery as there are two. 
and you can find us on iTunes as well. We look forward to seeing you again.